G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. All right, Saturday afternoon here in Australia and the market has jumped up in a big way, back above that $2 trillion mark. We actually went from $1.91 trillion to $2.1 trillion. So, whew, big move, like $200 billion added to the market in a very short time. Bitcoin dominance still holding reasonably well. It's actually up ever so slightly, so 42%. I think, you know, people are probably learning that, yeah, the altcoins have amazing gains when things are going up, but when they're going down, they have really bad losses. You know, we'll have to wait and see whether that's actually what's happening there. But it's good to see Bitcoin dominance is holding. I mean, look at that 9% move in 24 hours. One of the larger moves out there, but not the largest, as we'll get to see very shortly. All right. Bit of volume there, nice. BTC price just under 48,000. I think it breached above 48,000 for a very short period of time, but that's also a specific level we'll have to have a look at very shortly. And ETH gas prices up ever so slightly, still uh, not as high as what we've seen them before, but not as low as what we want them either. All right, I mean, have a look at that. It's basically a sea of green. There's hardly anything that is down whatsoever. So let's go back. What's performed the best in the last 24 hours in the top 100? Axie Infinity. So there's uh, news come out that uh, they did a big airdrop to people who'd been using the game and you can actually stake with Axie Infinity now. So that's probably had a lot to do with what's happening, but also just the change in the market that just happened to come at that kind of same time, but nearly 50% rise in 24 hours. Very nice. ICX 22%, Theta 21%, eGold nearly 20%, Filecoin nearly 20%, Cell Flow Engine, I mean, you name it, there's just coins up all over the place. So things are looking quite nice, but I don't want people to get too far ahead of yourselves just yet. Again, I've got to say this every time, I'm not offering you financial advice, just giving you an opinion from someone who's been in the space for a little while. We're not out of the woods just yet, and we'll have a look at that shortly. But what about losses? I mean, you know, 7.4%. There's going to be at least one loss. There's always an outlier. What is it in the top 100? There we go. DYDX, they lost just under a percent. OMG Network uh, lost uh, around about half a percent. And then we're really going into the stable coins and things like that. So basically no losses this is the start of the weekend, so it's good. Are we now back to, you know, weekends where it just continues to pump? We'll have to wait and see. But what is likely to happen is at some stage, it still could come over the weekend or maybe Monday sort of morning, Sunday night, most likely going to be a bit of a retracement. So again, never financial advice. I have some money sitting on the side. I don't plan on DCAing uh, in until I see we have that retracement. And look, if it doesn't come at all this week, so be it, that money will just be sitting there on the side waiting for when there is a retracement. I like to buy when things are in the red and not at new, old, uh, not at new time, uh, at all time highs. And pretty much nothing really is at the moment, which is good. But since it's had a big pump, I might be able to come back tomorrow and buy things a little bit cheaper before it hopefully then pumps again. But then again, maybe it might dump. We'll have to wait and see. So let's go over to the Bitcoin chart and have a look. So very interesting what happened. Clean break. It actually used that downward trending line as uh, the resistance. And look at this big massive move. Bang. But look where it has currently rejected from. So 48,000 sort of 250, let's say, around about there. Give or take, you know, a couple of dollars. And now it is... Uh, it has a rejection from there at the moment. So hence why I was saying, we need to get through these marks. So it was good that we got through the 44, it was good through, it's good that we got up to the $48,000 level. But if we get a rejection from here and then start to go lower, we're still setting in uh, lower, low, lower highs. Sometimes you can have little things like this. So we can come up to here and then it rejects and again we come down to here. Now I'm not saying that's what we're going to do. I'm hoping that this really is the turn. You know, it's the, it's the 2nd of October here in Australia, but the 1st of October over in the States and things like that. And, you know, the end of September, October, it looked like it turned. And I'm hoping that's what's the case. But at the moment, I'm just not sold that that's what's happening. We need to break through here. And really, this is probably likely to come back if it's kind of healthy over the weekend or maybe Monday, we probably come back and retest 45,000 and then make our way back up. But what we have to watch out for is that we don't come down here thinking we're retesting at 45,000 to go back up. 
and then it does just start to go lower. Just a consideration, not trying to spread FUD, not trying to spread FUD. You know, I don't want to be the Debbie Downer or anything like that, but I'm just, I'm wary of this market really until we break here. We've got to get above that 52,000. Let's just round it up to 53,000. I think if Bitcoin gets above 53,000, we can comfortably say we're back in the bull market. But until it does, again, this could definitely still roll over and then we start to set in lower highs. Just something to keep in mind again, you know, I've been saying it for a long time. I believe we're still in a bull market. This is just a correction. This is what's, you know, happens in most corrections. I mean, let's measure it. Let's see, what was this? So there you go, that was a 50% correction. You know, scary in the traditional markets, uh, in crypto markets, kind of stock standard really. So we had our 50% correction, and now, oops, sorry, get rid of that. And now we have had, so we had a 50% correction followed by an 85% to the upside. So if you somehow manage to buy Bitcoin somewhere down about here, you're up 85% already. So that's pretty good, that's in a matter of months. So again, after an 85% move upwards, you're probably gonna see a bit of downside. So let's have a look, how much downside have we now seen? So we went from here, and we got down to here. So there we go. 50% correction, 80, uh, I think it was 85% to the upside, and now 25% to the downside, and now hopefully starting to make our way back up. So again, that's all pretty stock standard for uh, a cryptocurrency cycle, particularly in a bull market. In a bear market, uh, obviously it's the other way around, there's a lot more down than going up. But still just, uh, yeah, again, I really need to see us get above here before I really turn bullish. This can even come up to here and really get rejected from here, and then we could still go down lower. I think that's less likely. That wouldn't be what I would suspect, really, if it does start to get up here. I would expect it to get rejected from here, come back down, probably set uh, a mark down here. Maybe it even has to sort of come up to about here, come back down and retest it here, because that's generally what markets do. Not always, but they'll come back down and retest, hence why I was saying I thought this market might come down and uh, retest this. Now I'm more expecting it to come back down and retest this at some stage in the next few days. Doesn't mean it has to though, but wouldn't surprise me if it does. So we need to be able to come up to here, break through this, probably come back and retest it before we then start to make a move at uh, new all time highs. When that will happen, nobody knows. You know, Plan B has come out uh, and he had that projected model of uh, the base and he did say he expected Bitcoin to be at 60, I think $8,000 by the end of October. So really within the next month, according to Plan B. And he's been pretty accurate so far. Not, you know, 100% specific accurate with everything, but yeah, close enough. Anyway, moving on, a couple of really interesting stories. So Coinbase, they had uh, a bit of a, yeah, I guess it was a hack, a phishing attack and 6,000 customers uh, lost funds. Now they've already come straight out and said that they're gonna reimburse everyone for those funds. Very different to what happened with Compound. I told you about Compound and how they accidentally paid out too many rewards. Uh, and yeah, I knew there was gonna be some kind of, you know, reaction to that. And Coinbase, obviously, you know, a hack and paying out two rewards are kind of on the opposite ends of things, but there's way to, ways to handle things. And Coinbase came out and said, yeah, don't worry, we're gonna cover the funds uh, and, you know, no issues, which is, you know, they don't, technically have to do it but it's you know, a good business practice for them to do it so you know they did the right thing that makes people more happy to be in coinbase then we know uh what happened to compound they handed out too many rewards and this was their reaction now bear with me uh they have tried to amend it if you receive a large incorrect amount of comp from the compound protocol error please return it to uh this address keep 10% as a white hat. So that was nice. If they had have just left it there, that would have been fine. This is the last part that has rubbed people a little bit the wrong way. Otherwise, it's being reported as income to the IRS and most of you are doxxed. 
So basically threatening people to, you know, give the money back. Again, if they had to just stop this tweet here, I think it would have been perfect, the right thing to do. Hey, here's the address, you know, please send it back and look, keep 10% because that was a fault of a fault on ours. Unfortunately, did this and it got a ton of backlash. Now, Robert Leshner has come out here and said, I'm trying to do anything I can to help the community to get some of its comp back. And this was a boneheaded tweet approach. That's on me. Good that he's come out and said that. Nice. Uh, luckily, the community is much bigger and smarter than just me. I appreciate your ridicule and support. So look, started off bad. It was the wrong way to approach it. Like I said, if he just had to stop the tweet there, that would have been perfect. And I'm sure most people would have been like, hey, that's an extra 10%. I'm happy. You know, they've been looking after me. It's a good project and all the rest of it. But yeah, saying they're going to be doxxed and reported to the IRS probably was not uh, the way to go. But again, good that he came out and also, uh, you know, made an apology and said, you know, it was a boneheaded tweet and all the rest of it. Uh, and he appreciates the ridicule and support. So uh, at least he's learnt a lesson, you know, and again, paying out extra and being hacked, they are two very different things, but the way to handle it uh, is the same. You don't go out and, you know, start making threats against, you know, basically your customers, your clientele and things like that. So, you know, an error on Mr. Leshner and at least he understands uh, the mistakes that he's made uh, and, yeah, the way to best to handle it and the way to uh, not handle it are uh, the worst way to handle it. Anyway, mistakes get made sometimes. All right, very interesting. Grayscale, they have come out and they've added Solana to their $494 million digital large cap fund. So the asset manager's Bitcoin heavy fund has allocated 3.24% of Solana just this Friday. So that's pretty positive for Solana. The Grayscale is getting in there. Now, just because Grayscale invests in something doesn't mean it's the best tech and all the rest of it and it's going to the moon, but it's generally a pretty good indication that, you know, where the smart money's going. So I am kicking myself. I didn't buy any Solana uh, on the dip. It's still a lot cheaper than it was, and that is really something that I'm possibly going to look uh, to buy when we have our next dip, whether that's later today, tomorrow, Monday, Friday, whenever. I am looking to get a Solana position. I was hoping it would go lower, but it's always the way. Whatever price you want it to go down to, it probably rarely ever gets there. Uh, and then, you know, whatever price you want to get, what, want it to get to to sell, it rarely ever makes it there as well. But Grayscale adding Solana, uh, very nice. So I will be looking to finally get myself a position in Solana. I just wish I had it done it a long time ago. That that's the way it is. All right. Dolce and Gabbana have done an NFT collection and sold it for $5.7 million. I mean, the NFT space, it really is just... I don't know when it's going to stop and where it's going to end. I, I get the feeling like it is just going to go rampant. I, I still haven't bought an NFT, not one NFT. I was uh, tr uh, trying to get, you know, whitelisted to get one a while ago. The uh, sneaky vampire syndicate, I wasn't able to get on that, unfortunately. Uh, and I'm not paying, you know, 10 times the price of what they were sort of selling for. I just refused to do that. But, you know, Dolce Gabbana now do NFTs and 7.5 million. Now, the designers, hopefully I say this, Colazzoni Gen Genesee collection was sold via platform UNXD and that's on the Poly uh, Network uh, powered mar Polygon Network mount. Oh God. Polygon Network Powered Marketplace. So going on Layer 2s where it's nice and cheap and there's not all the gas uh, fees and all the rest of it. So very nice. And again, NFTs, they just, yeah. I really don't know where the top is uh, and I don't know if they'll ever have uh, you know, the same kind of corrections that uh, other cryptocurrencies may have. Now, again, don't get me wrong, the prices in a ton of NFTs uh, are going to be nothing worth what they're being sold for at the moment. The good ones will hold their value. Majority of them, they'll be worth nothing. Uh, and, you know, that's just the way it is. But more NFT news. So DC Comics, they aim to release one of the largest NFT drops ever at this year's Fandome. So DC Comics uh, Inc., has announced the firm has partnered with Palm NFT Studio in order to unleash a large swath of non-fungible token collectibles. The NFT drop will take place during the DC Fandome on October 16th and the NFT art will feature superheroes like Batman, Superman, Green Lantern, Wonder Woman and Harley Quinn. Now look, I reckon some of these probably will gain value 
because they will be the first, not because they will be the best, you know, sort of ones ever. Uh, and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying rush out and buy these and that they're going to, you know, be worth $100,000 more. But if they are some of the first ever NFTs, they're the ones that I think, you know, might be able to, you know, go up in value. Again, not crazy amounts, some may, but these are the kind of NFTs that I would definitely be looking at. You know, the first ones of some big company, they will probably hold their value. After that, you know, there's going to be a thousand different NFTs and short of, you know, them being kind of rare and all the rest of it, it's the first ones that you want to get into. And if not the first, the second or the third one, something like that, after that, then they all just kind of blend into each other. But again, the NFT space continues to grow. This was super interesting. The third largest bank in France, and again, I'll probably butcher this, Societe uh, Generale, hopefully I said that right, proposes use of DeFi protocol MakerDAO. This is old traditional finance now moving into the new system. If this happens, this is going to be, it'll be a game changer. It really will. This will be the first. So the proposed dubbed security tokens refinancing was published on October 1st to MakerDAO's forums. And the submission aims to utilize the DAI stablecoin to refinance a covered bond concept. So bringing bonds to the blockchain using MakerDAO. MakerDAO has really been quiet and I haven't heard too much of MakerDAO uh, in a really long time and I thought they were going to kind of go into a, uh, an irrever... Ir I can't even say it. Uh, basically be forgotten. I can't say the word that I'm uh, trying to... Uh, I know irrelevancy, basically. I thought they were going to become irrelevant. But I actually think that maybe MakerDAO would be the perfect platform for traditional finance to come over and get into uh, the whole DeFi space. Because really, MakerDAO is like they're the OG, you know, they are the old uh, DeFi, <laughs> if you like it. They were the first. So I think, and you know, been around for the longest time, uh, haven't had any too many major issues, and any major issues they did, they fixed. Uh, and they've really been able to just sort of sustain for a long time. So I think I wouldn't be surprised to see a whole, you know, once, because they're coming, <laughs> whether they're going to admit it or not and whether anyone would like to say it, traditional finance, they are coming to the blockchain. They're all going to get on board. They know what's coming. It is simply regulation that's sort of stopping it, but also they're just hesitant. They realize that that old system, you know, that they had control of and all the rest of it is gone and now there's this new system and they have to get on board but they don't like the fact that they don't have control of it but that won't change the fact that they are going to have to come across and I th it would not surprise me if a lot of the traditional finance stuff go through things like MakerDAO again Ethereum you know it is the behemoth it's the base layer you know you look at things like Solana and uh, Cardano and you name it it doesn't matter all these other you know they called themselves layer ones but they actually are layer twos outside of something truly horrible happening to Ethereum. And particularly, you know, if ETH 2.0 rolls out with no major issues, Ethereum is going to be the base layer. And all these other platforms, they're just going to be layer twos. That's why they're all uh, trying to be EVM compatible because they know they need to go back to uh, Ethereum because that's where the bulk of it is. So, you know, Solana, again, Terra Luna, uh, you name it, all these, again, sort of layer ones. That I think in the future, they're going to be layer twos for Ethereum. Ethereum will be the base layer and Bitcoin will be the base um, the base currency. It, it will be the currency that it's based off. Ethereum isn't a currency. Uh, again, it's, I like that analogy that, you know, Bitcoin is uh, gold 2.0, digital gold, and Ethereum is you know oil 2.0 it's uh, you know the oil of the internet and things like that and that's how i see things going forward in the future now that's not going to happen tomorrow but next sort of 5 10 to 20 years i think we're going to see that that's really the way things will go there's just nothing else that you know there's nothing else like bitcoin no matter how many other things they come out with there's nothing like bitcoin it's decentralized no one owns it it can't be corrupted at, you know at the moment maybe some computer tech comes in in the future that can I, I think bitcoin you know people will keep upgrading it continuously and that's less likely to happen 
but I think that's why it's going to be uh, the currency, you know, of the internet at least, because no one owns it. It can't be manipulated. It can't be overprinted. And I think that is really the way things are going to go in the future. It's more a matter of time rather than a matter of if. But again, that's never financial advice, just my personal opinion. Here we go. Surprise, surprise. SEC delays four Bitcoin ETFs. So they were supposed to come out sort of mid-October, make a decision. They've now pushed them back. So I think, I think the earliest one now is around November 24th, 25th. Uh, and the other ones push out to around about December the 15th. Uh, yeah, how, how long is this going to take? I don't think the SEC is going to delay for too much longer, in all fairness, particularly with you know ETFs coming out uh, in Canada. And now there's a multi-ETF out there that has Bitcoin and Ethereum. I think it's 65% Bitcoin and then uh, 35% Ethereum, something like that. You know, other countries are doing them. I think, you know, the US, they're going to get on board. They can't hold this train for too much longer. It's basically already started to move and they're just following it on the platform uh, at the moment going, we're going to jump on at the very last minute. But until it's about to leave, they're just sort of staying on the sidelines. That's my analogy of how I sort of see things. But I think the SEC uh, will come and you know they will get... I won't say the regulation that we all want. And again, we, we need to remember that the regulation that happens in US will really affect uh, other places around the world because the US dollar is the base currency. It doesn't mean their rules and regulations uh, are exactly what's going to be enacted elsewhere because other countries are already moving uh, fast to come up with their own rules and regulations. And I brought you that story yesterday about the Australian senator who's trying to come up with regulations here in Australia and they're going to be, you know, crypto friendly ish we'll have to wait and see but they won't be looking to completely stifle innovation and you know sort of outlaw everything we do need rules and regulations but i like you know elon musk's approach don't try and regulate it so much we do need some kind of base layer grounds but really just go after the obvious bad players anyone who's running outright scams and you know defrauding and all that absolutely the law should go after them but outside of that let this industry grow and let's see what it can do. Uh, and again, you know, regulations for crypto, not crypto uh, trying to fit into old regulations. I won't harp on that because I do almost every time I'm on here. All right, last but not least. So Biden admin weighing bank-like regulation for stablecoin users. So this is interesting as well. The Biden administration is reportedly considering a new legal framework for stablecoin issuers that will put them in the same category as banks. I like this and I don't like this. I like it because at least it's going to give us clear regulation. But then, you know, have they made new the old? That's what I don't want. Uh, so, yeah, I'm torn between this, but I like the idea that maybe they're going to step back from, again, trying to just hammer down on cryptocurrencies in general and just try and, you know, a cryptocurrency is such a big space already and it's moving so fast. Yes, let's get some regulation around stable coins that, you know, whatever stable coins, you know, anyone has, they have to prove that they have them backed dollar for dollar. That I don't mind. We need all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, as for what the other rules are around it, I'm not so sure. But yeah, I'm, so I'm on the fence at the moment. Uh, there's parts about this that I really like, but I also think are really positive for crypto. But there's parts of this I'm just unsure about. And I think there could be a uh, an adverse uh, side to it as well, but we'll have to wait and see. And I'll continue on. The Wall Street Journal reported on Friday that the administration is looking to conceive, uh, convince, sorry, Congress to create a new special purpose charter for stablecoin issuers and other companies that fall within the same category. Although it's not entirely clear how the legislation will look, it's expected to be tailored specifically to these types of business models. Finally, this is what we need. A new charter, something new, with new rules and regulations for this new system. Don't try and fit this new system into the old system. That just won't work. It'll create all sorts of problems. Quite often, it's like renovating a house. It's a pain in the backside sometimes. A lot of the time, it's easier to simply just knock that old house down and build a whole new one rather than trying to, again, put you know new parts onto something that was basically finished as is. 
So that's, again, another analogy that I like. Don't worry about trying to, you know, if it's just one tiny little room and that's all you want to do, then cool, you could probably do it and fairly cheaply. But if you want to do major renovations, a lot of the time it's easier to just knock it down and build a completely new one. Uh, everything will fit together like it's supposed to. You won't be trying to, again, you know, wire up old stuff to, you know, new tech and all the rest of it. Sometimes that is more of a hassle than, uh, again, trying to just uh, marry them up when they're not going to. All right, that's it from me. Not a whole lot going on the weekend now, so we'll obviously have to wait and see how things are going. I'm really waiting to see what Bitcoin does. I'm not going to be surprised if over the weekend we start to come back down and probably get somewhere down around this $45,000 mark. Again, I never, I'm never offering you financial advice. I'm not saying that's what I think uh, will happen. I'm just saying I wouldn't be surprised. We have been rejected from here, but my issue is if we come down to 40, 45000 and we don't bounce from here and use that as support and start to come back down here again, then I would expect that we are gonna make our way back down to 40,000 and this was simply just a shake out and maybe we fall back inside this falling wedge. That's what I'm looking for, that's my thoughts. Stay safe, be kind to one another, everyone should be on that gain train at the moment and I'll see you next time.